Hello, everyone, and welcome to the March 14th, 2022 Select Board meeting. In keeping with an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency as amended by Governor Baker on February 12th, 2022, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board and commission members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards the quorum. The meeting will be broadcast live and recorded on Eastern Community Access Television, Comcast 98, Verizon 23, and on ECAP's website, www.eastoncat.org. This meeting is closed captioned for the hearing impaired. If you're watching on your computer, you'll see a CC button at the toolbar on the bottom of your screen. If you're watching at home and you have a question or a comment, you can email the board at selectboard.easton.ma.us. If you're watching from an electronic device, please pose your question on the Q&A feature of the Zoom portal. Please remember to include your name and street address for our minutes. And at this time, I'd like to ask each select board member to state their name to ensure that we have a quorum. Craig Barger. Amy Stebbins. Jennifer Stacy. And I'm Dottie Fulginetti. And for the minutes, um, please note that select board member Mark Lamb will not be able to be in attendance this afternoon. Um, so the first item, so this is, um, I should have, I should have opened this as the sewer commissioners. I just realized that I said select board. Um, so we're going to be doing the sewer commissioners first. Uh, we will officially open the sewer commissioners meeting at 601 and Craig, do you want to, um, review the, uh, read the public notice? Sure. <clears throat> the Eastern sewer commissioners hold a public hearing via remote participation using the Zoom platform on Monday, March 14th, 2022 at 6 p.m. to assess a sewer privilege fee to 670 Depot Street, Easton, Mass., and to consider an in-kind public benefit authorization in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 83, Section 17, and the Easton Code Chapter 55, Sewer Use Regulations, Section 5, sewer privilege fee. Terrific. Juana, do you mind if I do the um, the acceptance of the minutes first before we start into the rest of this? Because I know I'm going to forget it at the end. Absolutely. It was your meeting. Okay. Uh, if everybody has had a chance to take a look at the minutes, if somebody would like to make a motion to accept the minutes of July 26th, 2020. So moved, Barger. Second, Stebbins. Barger, Stebbins, Craig? Barger, yes. Stebbins, yes. Stacy, yes. And Fulginetti, yes. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, Connor, if you want to lead us into this uh, hearing. Sure. So uh, attached in your materials is a copy of the hearing notice, as well as the statutory references to state law and the uh, select board, or sorry, the sewer commissioner's own bylaws adopted by town meeting uh, as it pertains to the assessment of privilege fees. And uh, not only for privilege fees, but in this particular instance, uh, we have a uh, request for an in-kind, uh, what's called an in-kind uh, public benefit authorization. And so what, what that is under your regulations is effectively a way for the town uh, to set a reasonable uh, privilege fee that recognizes the cost to a private owner outside of the bounds of the public construction project. So in this instance, that's Mr. Hamalian. Uh, he, this is a hearing, so after uh, staff give their analysis, he's, of course, free to, to, to speak. Um, but in this case, Mr. Hamalian's property, 670 Depot, is just outside the extent, uh, approximately 400 feet of where the public five-corner sewer construction ended. That uh, sewer district has and was designed with extra capacity so that people could be privileged in for purposes of bettering their uh, on-site wastewater treatment and uh, unlocking uh, economic potential for them. Uh, and so what the regulations call for is that when somebody is outside of that district and they want to connect into it, they need to pay what's called a privilege fee, which is effect the starting bar there is commensurate with what a betterment that everyone who was in the public construction project would have had to pay. And so this is a, a financial principle, but it's also an equity principle. The idea being that you don't want to construct a large sewer system and have it funded entirely by betterments by those who are in the initial program, so to speak, and then have people be able to connect to it uh, and outside of their private cost have no public contribution. So uh, that being said, there are circumstances, including the one before you tonight, where the private costs that must be borne to connect to the sewer uh, are substantial, and in, in certain cases, the contribution the, the, of that private party is creates a public good. 
And so in this instance, Mr. Hamalian uh, has designed up to what would be uh, uh, public specifications, an eight inch sewer main, uh, including laterals uh, from a property that it passes to travel over roughly 400 feet to his property. Uh, this is not just a simple two inch pipe uh, for, for single service. So this, this is a public interest that it be built to this design. That is obviously more expensive than uh, doing a two inch single service to one's property. And so what your regulations allow is for the board to uh, con consider uh, what the cash value of that public infrastructure construction being uh, implemented by the private party is. And in this case, uh, that is estimated uh, at approximately 156,700. The board's regulations call for an assessment uh, of what, if this property were in the public project, how many sewer betterment units would you have assessed? DPW uh, uh, and Greg Swan, who's here tonight to answer any questions you have, have looked at that based on the number of businesses and flow data and uh, assessed that at what would be nine sewer betterment units or 178,000. Uh, so what we are recommending or DPW is recommending and, and I am agreeing with is that uh, an in-kind public benefit be calculated of, of eight SBUs, reducing that uh, privilege fee uh, to one uh, sewer betterment unit. So uh, DPW is here if there's any questions from the board. Uh, and then if the board's satisfied with, with my presentation, anything you have for Greg, obviously, uh, Mr. Hamali is here as well. Hey, Greg, did before we take questions, did you have anything you wanted to add to that or just go right in? Uh, nope, um, Connor covered it. We have uh, Mr. Hamillion is extending the sewer line. It's the same size and slope as the existing sewer main. Uh, and this is required for him to connect. Uh, this is to, you know, he, Connor basically covered everything for this particular property. So I have really nothing more to add. All right, I'll start with you, Craig. Uh, Greg, just a question about the, the, the actual construction. Is that something that that we take care of in terms of selecting a contractor, or does does he does Mr. No, Hamalian? Uh, Mr. Hamalian is part of. If you look in your packet, I included a, a quote from Jones Contracting. Uh, yeah, they, had that. Through, yeah, they had to go through the drain laying process and get licensed as a, as a drain layer in town. They're a qualified contractor, um, and what will happen is is they will go into the street, they will install the manholes, they will connect the line. Um, they will do all the work for the complete project, including what's in the public right away. We'll be just doing inspections. Uh, we'll be out there every day monitoring what's going on, making sure that everything's compacted and placed correctly and everything is uh, constructed the way it's supposed to be done. Um, so we'll be observing them and holding to that uh, before we allow them to connect. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Yep. Jamie. How soon uh, would this begin? Uh, the winter moratorium doesn't lift until April 1st. So if uh, Mr. Hamillion, um, after this process is over, if uh, uh, after tonight, Mr. Hamillion has to come back with Jones Contracting and get a sewer connection permit. Uh, once he pays the fee, we will issue the permit. Uh, the earliest he could begin would be April 1st, uh, depending on the weather. Um, but we would have to have enough time to be able to put out enough notice. It's not, the area that they're uh, planning on installing this is right on Depot Street, right north of Five Corners. Um, we're still getting 10, 15,000 trips a day through there. So we would have to put out a lot of public notification that this construction would be going on, come up with some traffic management plans, uh, make sure we can detour traffic, talk to the police to make sure we have uh, adequate details available. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of a lift here before we can break ground. Um, but if, you know, tomorrow they come in with a permit, there's no reason why I don't think they couldn't start by April 1st or whatever the, the first full week is uh, that they'd be allowed out there. Great. Thank you, Greg. Yep. Jen. Um, just curious if, if there's precedent for other arrangements like this and if it opens the doors to other like requests of this nature and if that's a consideration that we should be considering or what I mean, obviously this, this um, site brings huge value to our community. So it's more just a pragmatic question about, you know, precedents and whatnot. Sure. This is actually, oh, I'm oh. sorry, Connor, you wanna go ahead. Uh, no, that, that's fine. You, oh, this is the first time we've actually had this situation arise. Uh, the For all consideration, our sewer system in town is relatively new. Um, so this is the first, and especially with the Five Corners area being as successful as it is to all the other districts and uh, compared to the district size, um, this is the first opportunity. So we're kind of setting a precedent here. Um, so 
no, we have We don't have anything else to measure this by what we do tonight. What is what we will measure uh, everything else to in the future. Right. And, and what's important here is that your these regulations were contemplated, uh, I think, actually back in 2012. So uh, the way that they work, and you'll see later on your agenda, you have three other properties, but the, there's no hearing notice there because there is no um, in-kind public benefit being mm -hmm. uh, offered. And so that's a much easier calculation. One new house, one new benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, so, so uh, this already, this, this precedent exists. It is the first one you've had. Uh, but it doesn't bind the board for future action. It would, the process would be the same. So if in the future, somebody uh, outside of the district said, I want to extend the sewer, uh, we would do the exact same thing. We'd have the engineers, you know, take a look at it, make recommendations on what the equitable uh, cost share there would be. And we would recommend that forward. Um, so it, there's this, this is um, appropriate given the regulations. Awesome. Sounds like a good economic development tool. So, Greg, yeah, Daddy. Um, so, Greg, how many how many private properties are between where the sewer line ended and where Mr. Hamalian wants to bring his line to? Uh, one. It would be resident five corners. The existing sewer currently terminates um, just outside of the driveway to the uh, Mutual Savings Bank, uh, the Northeastern Savings Bank on mm -hmm. Depot Street. Um, and the only property between him and that is the residence at Five Corners. Okay. Thank you. And this property is included as part of the DIF? It is in the district? I can check that quickly. I intended to, and I forgot to. Uh, one moment. Well, while Connor's looking for that, Daddy, one of the questions I had is if, um, does it continue to reduce the betterment of existing? Uh, so the initial no. So, so the betterment was a, is a is a tool that we use to pay for the construction cost. Okay, construction has been completed. The project has been completed. Betterments have been issued. Um, now we don't use the betterment process to pay for. We we have some capacity in reserve so that we can sell it off. And if people want to join in, they have a fair in kind cost. They're not joining in for free after the project. Okay, there is a public benefit here. You, you know, Mr. Hamillion wants to join to the district. Um, so he's gonna have to pay to and, offset. Right, and, and, and to be clear, when we built these sewers out and there is excess capacity, the town carries the cost of that capacity on our general capital borrowing, uh, right. which is why we're privileging exists. So we're not, um, when, if you get a betterment during the construction of a project, you are not paying more than your fair share. Uh, of your your slice of capacity and infrastructure. That, that's what I wanted to hear. Thank you. But it's also not intended to to um, attract that kind of tie-in, although it does happen. If you'll remember when we were doing the Quisit um, sewer district, the people on Eisenhower Drive wanted to find out what it would cost to bring sewer down to their neighborhood, and it was cost prohibitive for them to do that. So there, sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't from, from the cost for that. So while that didn't go through, um, the precedent I guess if you would say is we have had people inquire about doing something like this with a privilege fee, the same. That, that is true. Yeah, there are times where the, the cost feasibility is just not there and it would just be so upside down that you can't do it. And Dottie to confirm uh, based on the master plan map, this is the final property in the diff. Right. So that means, um, you know, should there be uh, additional value to that property um, if if that does get built out a, a little bit more any of that um, appreciation half of that goes right into the diff so that these mechanisms are all showing it, exactly um, the way it works and the way it was planned so um, so I'm glad that, that Mr. Hamelian and his family can take advantage of this if there's no more questions from the board, uh, Mr. Hamelian is in the uh, in the presenter's uh, window. I wanted to just ask if you do have any questions before we take this to a vote. And Michael, if I recall last time, um, 
Bob was here. I think his uh, computer was not cooperating and he had to call in and I see a phone number in the audience. I don't know if that is him. So we moved uh, the phone number ending in 4577 into the presenters. And if this is you, Mr. Hamalian, if you want to hit star six on your phone, that should unmute you. And if it's not you, we'll give you a minute and then we'll move you back. <clears throat> I don't think it doesn't look like that's him. Um, Bob, could you just confirm uh, through the QA or, or the chat that you have been able to hear and follow along with us? So uh, do you, would you like us to find a way to move? Uh, is that your phone number? Do you wish to, to speak? It's a public hearing, so we have to verify that. Oh, um, th we just got something in the Q&A. This is not, it's not Robert Hamalian who's the call in, I don't think. Okay. So we'll, oh, there he is. You're on mute though. <laughs> Uh, there should be your, it looks like you're still muted on the Zoom platform. The bottom left should have a button for you to unmute on your screen. Unless you're on mobile, then I'm not sure. That's Zoom. Uh... Dottie, do we have the uh, phone in information? Um, yes. Uh, Bob, we could read you the telephone number. To join by phone, it's 646-558-8656. And the webinar ID is I see uh, a 0910 number is just joined. So, Michael, can we move? And what is it, Dottie? Star 66? Nope, just star six on your phone. Now I'm unmuted. Now I'm unmuted. Now I'm unmuted. Now I'm unmuted. <laughs> So you'll have to mute your uh... Yes, that's a little better, but I think if you mute your computer speakers, it will fix the issue. You'll be able to hear us through your phone and speak to us through your phone. I'm sorry, is that okay now? Oh, perfect. Great, thank you. I'm sorry, this, I have an Apple iPad and it hasn't been I've always had trouble. Um, so no, I don't really have any questions. I understand both um, um, Greg and Connor um, and uh, Michael, um, when I uh, went to a meeting, they explained why um, they needed to charge uh, one, uh, one betterment um, fee. And, um, you know, I, the, the costs are considerable, um, but, but it's all completely explained and it seems very, very fair to me. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, Thank you. um, we appreciate you coming forward and wanting to do this and to uh, to better your plaza there. And, uh, you know, 
uh, this is exactly what we were hoping is that this would be a real driver for economic development. So thank you very much for, the, for this opportunity. And thank you all for your consideration. Appreciate it. Great. So with that, okay. I think the motion, uh, I just want to run by the number on this. So we want to make the motion to, um, to accept the sewer privilege fee and in-kind benefit authorization for 670 Depot Street, Easton, uh, in the amount of 178,533. Is that the whole, is that all? Uh, with, with an estimated in-kind public benefit of 156,700. Uh, and that the privilege be adjusted to reflect that public benefit and that I and DPW be directed to reduce this to writing uh, via a written decision with Mr. Amali, which your regulations call for. Okay. Do you want to make that motion, Craig? I was going to say so moved. I don't know if I want to repeat the whole thing, but I think everybody understands. So moved, Barger. Second, Stebbins. Roger and Stebbins? Barger, yes. Stebbins, yes. Stacey, yes. And full Genetti, yes. And again, as uh, Connor noted, you will get that decision written uh, in writing, sent to you. And um, we appreciate you being here tonight. Well, thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you for doing business in Easton, Mr. Mullion. We appreciate it. Oh, oh thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Right, and so for the next item, we have uh, the discussion and vote for assessment of sewer, pre sewer privilege fees for 507 Foundry Street, 551 Foundry, 553, and 555 all on Foundry. So do you wanna start us with that, Connor? Uh, actually, I, I figured Greg is here. Uh, Greg, you wanna just walk everyone, so 507 is, is a business and the others are some housing. So Greg, you wanna just walk folks through these? These are much more um, direct. Uh, I'd be happy to. These are pretty straightforward. 507 Foundry Street is the uh, vacant bank uh, in the McGuire's parking lot on Foundry Street. Um, Will Adams is developing it. He's going to turn it into a coffee shop, uh, an Aroma Joe's. Uh, he's provided some documentation um, demonstrating what his uh, water bills will be. Um, so one of the two ways we look at an SBU is either um, the storefront uh, it would be one SBU, which was assessed in the original project, but because it is a change in use, they're, they're making the property bigger and better. Uh, they're going to be using a little bit more water, a little bit more sewer. Um, I've included a calculation in the packet, and what it comes out to be is that um, this change in use would be using uh, two SBUs worth of water and sewer um, on an annual basis. Um, so it is our recommendation to increase the, uh, the privilege fee would be equivalent to one SBU to bring the total assessment to the property to two SBU. So be um, $19,837. Well, the, the vote on this would be to accept the, um, the privilege to the connection with the privilege fee in, in increasing by one betterment unit. Well, correct. They're already connected because they're a part of the original project. This is a change in use. They're making the property bigger and better. Um, so it would be a privilege. It would be a change in use fee. Oh, okay. Change in use fee. Of yeah, it's an exact. So the, when we're doing these, and we're going to be doing a lot more of these in the future, I hope. Um, there's really we're either here because they're building a new building or because they're changing the original intent of what was assessed. And in this case, they're changing the original intent of the property, uh, which is great for us. It's an economic, you know, that, hey, we we have sewer now and we can build a coffee shop here where we might not have been able to do that before. All right. so, I think it's just a terminology thing. I, I just thought that any a change in use is a privilege fee. It, if it is. This is still a privilege fee. I, I should have clarified about the prior hearing. There's two different ways privilege fees come up. One is outside the district tying in, and the other is, to Greg's point, existing in the district, but uh, improving their use and expanding it above what was originally there, which is, to his point, exactly what we all want to see. This is, this is taking better advantage of the existing real estate because the infrastructure allows it now when it once didn't. Right, I'm just trying to think of how to craft the motion for the- Sorry, I was gonna say the motion, the motion is to increase the fee- To, to assess uh, one- SBU. It, To just assess one, uh, privilege, a privilege fee equivalent to one additional sewer better. 
at 507 Foundry Street. That's correct. So move, so move Barger. Well, did anyone did anyone have any comments or questions on this? Oh, I'm sorry. We get to that. It's pretty straightforward. So. Okay, and Mr. Adams, I don't think is here. I don't see him in the uh, in the name. So, all right, Craig, go ahead. So, so moved <laughs> to to add to to increase the privilege to fee, assess the privilege to assess fee. the privilege fee at nineteen thousand eight hundred thirty-seven dollars to five hundred seven Foundry Street. Second, Stebbins. That's Barger and Stebbins. Barger, yes. Yes. AC, yes. And full genetic, yes. Okay. So the next one is 551 and 553 foundry. Yes. So we can include 555 as part of this discussion. Um, uh, the property was purchased um, and subdivided into three lots. The existing property at 555 um, retained some space. Um, but 553 and 551 were subdivided, and um, we're going to, they're going to, the developer is going to turn it into uh, single family homes. Um, so this is a new, this is kind of like Mr. Hamillion. It's a new property that wasn't part of the original district. He's creating these properties, um, and they're building these new houses. Uh, when we built the district, one single family home of three, four, or five bedrooms was assessed one SBU. Uh, it is our recommendation that both 551 and 553 be assessed one SBU in kind. So we're essentially adding the one SBU to this because it's doubling its size of the three to four bedrooms. We're adding one additional to each of those addresses. Is that correct, Greg? Correct. There's two new houses being built, so we're adding two new SBUs. And they will have to build, they will have to pay that privilege fee before they can get an occupancy permit. Well, you're so you're saying it's two SBUs, but it's it's going to be 50, 51 and fifty three. It's are you saying one SBU each for those? Correct. Yes. So if you wanted to do one SBU for five fifty one, and then one SBU for five fifty three. Okay. All right. Just wanted to double check that because then we have the five fifty five. Correct. Kind of go on saying that twice. All right. Anybody have any comments or questions on this one? Well, Greg. So this is this. These two lots are under the new zoning of sm smaller lots in the area. Is that correct? I, I want to just note. I see a friend of ours from the finance committee here, and uh, we were talking about this last week. And this is exactly the kind of thing that we've been working with the planning board on, the select board, and the sewer commissioners have been working on. So this is. You know, DPW built the sewer, but this is a, this is one piece of property that was formerly just 555, and under the new zoning that was adopted, there is uh, slightly smaller lot sizes allowed in certain parts of this district. So that allows what was once one single family to become more units, which is good for housing affordability, new growth, and obviously will be tying into and using the sewer. And part of the death. And part of the death. Right. It helps and 550, and 555. Is that changing at all, or does that have anything to do with this? Yes, it is. Let's, we'll, we'll get to that one oh, next. So yeah, we'll, okay. That's next. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so the, the motion. The motion is to. I'm sorry. I got to let everybody else talk first. I'm sorry. I was just going to mention the motion. So go ahead, Craig. See if you can get it out. So, so the motion is to 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 assess 551 and 553 one SBU each. So that's the motion. Okay, so move, Barger. Okay. Second, Stebbins. Barger, Stebbins? Barger, yes. Stebbins, yes. AC, yes. And Fulginetti, yes. Okay, now off to 555 Foundry Street. So 555, uh, five, yeah, 55 Foundry Street um, was in the part of the original SBU, it was assessed one SBU as part of the original project. Okay. Mr. Lincoln bought the property, is in the process of creating two separate condo units, two separate condominiums in that particular house. So the house is now gonna become a condo association and there'll be two units to be sold. Um, as part of this project, condos were assessed three different values, um, either a half SBU, three quarters of an SBU or a full SBU, depending on their square footage and bed, oh, I'm sorry, based on their bedrooms. 
Um, the floor plans that I've seen uh, Mr. Lincoln has provided show that the there are three bedrooms for each unit. So that would mean that a total assessment would be required of one SBU per condo. So there's two condos, two SBUs. There's already one SBU assessed to the property because it's an existing condition. He would need to have one SBU added on to, for a total of two for the property. I'm sorry if that if I made that a little more complicated than it seems. Um, but our recommendation is to increase the assessment by by one SBU um, for a total of two for the property. Any questions or comments on this one? I think we're getting the hang of it now. Craig, do you, do you want to um, say the motion for this one? Oh, okay, so the, the, the motion is to increase the SBUs by one at 555 Foundry Street. So moved. Or a privilege fee. Privilege. It's not a is it a privilege? It's not a privilege fee. It's just yes, it is all of these are. They're all privilege fees. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. SBU is the number that is the, the quantitative measuring stick that we use for all like minded properties in the district. So okay. it's assessing a privilege fee of one one betterment unit. Yes. Per yes. per unit. Per which per unit. And one okay. and in this case, one SBU is nineteen thousand eight hundred and thirty seven dollars. Okay. So moved, Barger. Second Stevens. Roger and Sevens, back to you, Craig. Roger, yes. Sevens, yes. Stacy, yes. And full Genetti, yes. Okay. And we already did the minutes, so I wouldn't forget. And um, can I just ask a quick question, Dottie, before we go off the topic? Um, I'm just curious, like as we're going through this, and I'm learning a lot about how this works. What happens if a homeowner decides to do a massive addition that adds bedrooms and therefore increases their Need for SBUs, like are they then reassessed or? Yeah, yes. they would. They would get a privilege fee assessed. So as part of a process okay. of them pulling permits with the building department, or depending on what they're doing, if they go to site plan, those departments flag that for comment by DPW. Usually, Greg or Dave Field sees it and says this is in the sewer district. The initial betterment was based on a calculated flow of X. Now it's X plus Y. This puts it over the threshold. You now need to assess a privilege fee. Okay. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure. So this is so in addition to the economic growth aspect of this, if someone does improvements to their home, it also triggers that this kind of process here. Yes, I just want to clarify uh, for uh, our friends watching in the press, but it's not automatic. It depends on. Yes. Now, right. I think, Greg, did you say it was three, four, five bedrooms or or was it two right. to five? No, it was up to a single family home up right. to five bedrooms was assessed right. in SBU. Right. If we get it, anything over that doesn't exist in the district right now. So we'll have to do an analysis, you know, work with the engineers and the architects to figure out what an appropriate SBU privilege fee would be at that time. Right. And, and to be clear, if a homeowner of a district improves their home in a way that has no bearing on sewer, they put a nice deck, we're not going to have them on this agenda. I don't want anyone to, to think that. Um, so. You know, but if somebody wants to go and all of a sudden they build a three bedroom guest house uh, in the back of their property, Right. We would have to have a discussion about that. Um, we're not trying to, you know, regulate anything in the district, but we're trying to keep, you know, fair and level playing field uh, for everybody already living in the district and anybody who would like to move here. And part of the thing is that when we um, looked at the sewer capacity and we drew the area of where that was going to be and we kind of knew what that capacity was, the sewers are built, the sewer um, capacity, it's designed to have that excess capacity because what we hope is going to happen is once we have the sewer, you're going to have a Starbucks and you're going to have an Aroma Joe's and you're going to have a Kinfolks and you're going to start to see um, new business, but also existing business or underutilized properties really want to grow because now they have the sewer but you have to have the capacity for them to be able to do that so that's why we reserve that and hold it if this all works out the way it was designed and intended then we will have to use that excess capacity that we give someone as a privilege fee because they didn't have to pay the betterment to start off with we don't want to make that unfair and um we'll still have the reserve um for for businesses and homes that want to expand Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. It's, Any it's exciting seeing this do what it was supposed to do, the sewer kind of the results of it all, all the hard work over a very long period of time. So 
it's, it's, it certainly is. And we'll have more uh, hopefully throughout the summer as more things work their way through permitting. Uh, DPW, as always, was super ambitious and they had like a, a very, very, very long list. So uh, we, we truncated that to the ones that are, are, are ready to go. Um, so you should see more of this this summer. And it's especially uh, nice to see this kind of growth that's happening during COVID. You know, a lot of this started during COVID and we're still in COVID, but um, to see that So if there's no other questions, I would take a motion to adjourn at 6.35. So moved, Barger. Second, Stebbins. Barger and Stebbins? Barger, yes. Stebbins, yes. Stacy, yes. And Jeanette, yes. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Thank Greg. you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.